Okay, welcome to part two, naming the notes on the guitar. Uh, if you didn't watch part one, naming the notes on the guitar using piano, you might want to go back and check that one out because you'll get a better understanding as to how the notes are laid out in music. And on the piano, your white keys are your natural notes and your black keys are your sharps and flats. And it's much easier to see on the piano than it is on the guitar. On the guitar, these fret indicators don't tell you what the notes are or what, what's sharp and what's flat. They're just indicators to kind of help you find positions on the guitar. Those dots also run along the edge of the neck there. However, on the 12th fret, you have your double dot. That will tell you where the certain notes are. The 12th fret is where everything repeats again. So the name of the note on the 12th fret will be the exact same name as that open string. There's only 12 notes in music. So on the 12th fret, that's where everything repeats again. And the musical alphabet goes from A to G. So there's your seven notes, and then you have five sharps and flats. So that gives you your 12. So let's start by naming the strings on the guitar. From your first to your sixth string, E, B, G, D, A, E. Or some people like to go from the sixth to the first, E, A, D, G, B, E. If you're going this way, Easter Bunny gets dizzy at Easter. If you per prefer to go this way, eat a darn good breakfast every day. That was also in part one. So let's start naming some notes. If you have your piano chart, it's a good idea now to put it in front of you. So you have your E. First fret would be an F. We've moved up one semitone or one fret or one uh, key on the piano. There are no sharps or flats between E, F, or B and C. If you look on your piano, you'll see that between E and F and B and C, there are no sharps or flats. There's no black key in between those. So E goes right to F. Everything else has a sharp or flat in between it. Sharps if we're ascending, going up. Flats if we're descending, going down. So E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. B goes right to C. No sharps or flats between B and C. C sharp, D, D sharp, E, back to E, 12th fret, E, same as your open string. The strings are named for the pitch that they produce. So if I hit an E on a, a guitar and I hit an E on a piano, they'll be the same note. They're, that's how it's tuned. That's how the guitar is tuned in standard tuning. That's why they're named those notes because they're tuned to those pitches. Now, if I want to show you some flats, I'll go to my B string, the second string. I'll go to the 12th fret, because that's also a B, and we'll go backwards using flats. B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, no sharps or flats between B, C, or E and F, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B and C. The musical alphabet goes from A to G, so whether you're going up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or if you're going backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. So you're always following that musical alphabet, whether you're ascending or descending. So your sharps and flats, uh, two different names for one note. E, F, F sharp. G, G flat. So this note could be called F sharp or G flat, depending on which direction you're going. In theory, it depends on which key you're in, but we're not really going to get into theory. We just want to name some of these notes. So this, they call that the unharmonic equivalent. So the unharmonic equivalent of F sharp is G flat. The same note sounds the same, but they have two different names, depending on the direction you're heading in. F sharp or G flat. Now, a good test to do is you pick a note, let's just say B flat. You find the B flat on every string. So that's a good way to kind of test your knowledge. So start on your E string and find a B flat. So locate a B and then lower it one fret or one semitone. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, B flat. Now pretty soon you'll start to know that A sharp and B flat are the same note, so you won't have to go up to B and then backwards. Let's go to our B string. I'm gonna to go to the 12th fret, because I already know that's a B. Open B, 12th fret is the same note name. 
B, lower it to one fret or semitone, B flat. Here's my G string, G, G sharp, A, B flat, right? A sharp and B flat are the same note name. Let's go to my D string, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp or B flat, there it is. A string, A, A sharp or B flat. It's my B flat right there. Now on my low E, my B flat will be in the same spot as it was on my high E because they're the same note names. So the pitches are, and the notes will be in the exact same place. Now, another <clears throat> test you can do to find where the notes are is you pick a chord that you know. So we're gonna use C in this example. Now a C major chord, in this case, we're strumming five strings. So there's five notes in there, but let's see what they're named. So this note here is C, A, A sharp, B, C. This one here is E, D, D sharp, E. It'll take you a little bit longer to find these, but I'm just naming them because I know what they are and I'll show you by example here. The next string that's strummed is my open G. Then I have this note here, which is a C, B, C. And then my first string, E. So C, E, G, C, E. There's really only three note names in there, a C, an E, and a G. I have a doubled C and a doubled E. That makes up my C chord. So now I write that on a piece of paper, C, E, G. Then you go through and you find all your C's, all your E's, and all your G's on the guitar. Now you can get a blank guitar chart and just start penciling in C, E, G all over the guitar. Now I've already prepared a guitar. I'm using a classical guitar because the neck is a lot wider and you'll be able to see a little bit easier. So all my orange stickers are my C's, all my yellow ones are my G's, all my green ones are my E's. Now I don't recommend you go putting stickers all over your guitar because once you do two chords then your whole guitar is going to be covered in stickers. So it's better to use a paper chart and kind of draw them in and, and use that as your reference. But here's the C chord that we were playing. So there's your regular C. C, E, open E, open G, sorry. C and E. Now all these other notes are available to me if I want to make other C chords. So here's C. Here's another version of C. Or maybe add this note up top. These are all versions of C that are available to you. Ones that you might not have thought to use before. Or maybe you've seen someone play them before and just haven't really thought about it. Oops. So all these different shapes you can use to make different C chords instead of always relying on this. Now imagine you have a second chord in your song, which of course you will. You, let's say it's a D chord. You find where all those notes are. You learn what the names of them, chart them out all over the guitar, and then you'll find different shapes for that chord. Now you, your song is gonna sound that much more interesting because you're not always following the standard shapes. Now, how does that work with soloing? We're gonna get into that a little bit later on, but I'll briefly show you. If you have a song and you're strumming away at a C chord, well, now look, these are all your solo notes that you have available to you. And they'll all sound great over a C chord because they're all part of the chord. So you're, not, you're never gonna hit a wrong note when you do that. Now you can start to see why learning the names of the notes on the guitar is one of the most important things you'll do, especially if you're not going to learn theory, is because once you know how to play one thing, you can figure that one thing out all over the guitar. You can use it to build chords, you can use it to make solos, create harmonies, any instrument uh, like a saxophone line or um, uh, you pick the instrument. I'll leave that completely up to you. If you have any questions, just send me some tweets at, at Nathan Fleet on Twitter or just send some comments in the uh, comment box below the video and stay tuned for more interesting things that we're going to do on the guitar. I hope you're enjoying.